So, environment lighting in R node. Environment lighting can be incredibly simple. At its very basic, all it needs is a HDRI, and that's it. So HDRIs are high dynamic range images that store pixel values that both the human eye cannot detect and screen monitors don't display. But this information can be used as a lighting source within a 3D package. So to use a HDRI as a light source, we just need to make sure that the sun is bright enough within the HDRI. In this case, if we take a look at the, the value samples that pop up down here, this is fusion, we can see that the sun here in the middle is 31 in some spots, but it goes much higher if I can just find them. Yeah, compared to the 0 0.1 of the sky. So this makes for an incredibly bright sun that we can use as a light source. Now, the process would be to find a backplate and a HDR that matches what it is that you want to create and then create your lighting scene based on this to match. Good lighting requires good reference and the last thing you want to do is start making stuff up and just inventing stuff rather than working from a reference image. Now sometimes you won't need a backplate or you are building clouds in 3D but it's best to find a HDR with one supplied just in case. The best website that I found for HDR images is HDRI Haven which offers massive HDRs and backplates for absolutely free. So you can just jump up here to HDRs and take a look. Okay, so on to environment lighting. As mentioned previously, the aim is to get everything we need from just the HDR, but this isn't always possible. And this is when we probably will add a distant light, which we would match closely to the rough sun direction of the HDR and use a blurred version of the HDR image to stop the shadows from the sun and the shadows from the, the sky fighting each other. Now every type of lighting setup is set up in pretty much the same way, even night lighting that we can see here. Although it's a better idea to give a general light over the image and then darken this down in comp. This is similar to what happens in movies and it definitely makes it easier on the sampling of the scene. In general, it's best to light naturally and grade later rather than overwork your lighting to match a cinematographic grade that doesn't actually exist in reality. So in terms of lighting theory, that's it. Use a good HDR and don't overlight. Don't overcolor or mix lighting sources. And apart from that, there's not much to it. There is a difference between good and bad lighting, and that is really how close you stick to your reference and how close you stick to reality. So on to setting this up in Houdini. And let's look back at the landscape that we created. Now, as per week three, I want to save this out as an Alembic. So this is how far we took the landscape before we finished up. Let me just drop down an Alembic rock output and save this out. and bring it back in. Again, I'll leave it unpacked. This just stops Houdini from recalculating this whole stream and instead loads it in as a single piece of geometry. Cool, so let's go to the, the render view and we should see as per the previous video, that our ACES colour space is already set up, which will give us a much more balanced render.
Just for now, we will add a render operator to the out node. If we start typing in Arnold, this should pop up. We will explain what this means a bit later, but let's take a look at the viewport here first. So within the render view, we have render, we have reset here and pause and cancel. This is where we choose our ROP, in this case, Arnold 1. We can open up those render settings that just make these uh, parameters here jump out into a new window. We have uh, the choice of camera within the scene, the camera settings. Refresh the render as we go, create uh, preview versions and run through those passes. And then we can ignore this stuff for now and take a look under here. This is where we would grab the AOVs when we create them within the ROP. And at the bottom, we can switch between the channels, red, green, blue, and alpha. We can adjust the brightness, the contrast, and the exposure. And here, this is where we play about with our color spaces. Just below this, when we have a render, we can also take a snapshot and flick through and compare. Okay, so let's go back to the scene view and drop down a new light. In this case, we want an Arnold light and we'll switch this to environment or sky dome. So this just gives us the HDR. To bring it in, we need to switch this to texture. It's set to angular, but we want lat long. And then we just have to navigate to the HDR. So although here, within the color family, it should already be loading in the correct color space, but we want to just make sure that this is indeed raw, as we want the full color space of the linear EXR. It's the wrong one. Let me just get the right one. Below this, we have auto generate TX texture. So TX textures are important to Arnold in the same way that rats are important to Mantra. So it does something similar. It only loads part of the image that it needs and it also anti-aliases the texture and makes it more Arnold compatible. So leave this text for now. On the ROP, we also have it set up, so it will automatically read the TX file if it exists in the directory, so you don't have to redirect it. I'll also make sure that within the ROP, we have use color space set. Okay, so let me just hide the geo for now and hit render. So on this light, we have intensity and exposure. They both affect the intensity, but in different ways. Intensity works as you would expect, whereas exposure works exponentially. So the higher you go, the faster it increases. For one or two lights, it's not really that important. But if you're working across a whole scene, it's best to use the intensity to balance your lights and use the exposure as a global setting for all the lights if you feel the whole image needs to be brighter. Now, this is really just legacy from Mantra, as in Arnold, the exposure settings are on the camera, but this is how side effects got around the whole exposure setup for Mantra. You should be familiar with samples, and I would say to leave these as they are, and only increase them if you still find that the indirect illumination is noisy when you increase your pixel samples or your AA samples.
We will come back to all of this later. We could also set this to off, but if you have um, this set to interior only, it doesn't make that much of a difference because you would need portal lights to really activate this. If we go to shadows, I would also leave these as they are. It's better to balance these in comp and just leave them here. For the most part, the shadow color should be black. The density should be one. And of course, you definitely want it to cast shadows. The filters we won't cover here as they primarily relate to gobos, but they can be very powerful for indoor lighting, short lighting, or faking caustics. In the contributions tab, most of these guys will be self-explanatory. What this is doing is adding and removing whatever these contributions are to the final image. We can remove it from the camera, for instance. And most of these guys, again, as I say, were self-explanatory, apart from perhaps the AOV light groups, which we will again come back to a bit later. Now let's get a shader on our height field and come back to some of these settings here. Although we will cover shaders properly in a later video, let's just go ahead and add one here. So we'll drop down a shop network and this will just contain the shaders that we create. And inside we'll drop down an Arnold shader network. And again, jump inside. So here we have the material output, but what we need is a material. So for this, we use the standard surface and this is just Arnold's basic material. And we'll go ahead and connect the output of the shader into the surface here. For now, let's change the base to one to make sure we don't interfere with any of the color changes that come afterwards. Set the color here to 0.18. And we will explain why a bit later. And I will set the roughness to one just to reduce any highlights. And that's all I want to do for now. So switch back to the Geo node. And in the render tab here, we'll point this to the material. Nice. Okay, so I'll switch this back on and just hit render. Okay, now let's look back at the contributions on the light. As we mentioned before, we have the camera where we can remove the sky from the background. And this of course now affects the alpha. So to rotate the HDR, we have the transform here and we'll use the Y. I would recommend rotating it in 20 degree increments until you find a lighting setup that you like. In this case, zero is actually fine for me. Now, as we mentioned before, for me, the sunlight isn't strong enough. So what I want to do is drop down another Arnold light and set this to be the sun. Now, ideally, I wouldn't have to do this. I would just use the HDR, but although I could get the type of shadows that I want from the HDR, I can't get the sun high enough to achieve the right direction. So that's why I'm using a sun instead. Let me just set this to distant as that's what we want to do for the sun. All of these values are the same apart from the angle, which changes how quickly the fall off into something softer on the shadow becomes. So Realistically, this should be about 0.5. And for now, I'll set the intensity of the sun to something like 3 or 4. And then I'll also split the window so I can see what it looks like 
um, in the render whilst I move it around in 3D space. If you have another monitor, you can split this off so as not to shrink the viewports so small. Okay, so drag this in and lock it. And now we can move it around. And what I'm trying to do here is achieve the light hitting this hill, but making sure we get a nice shadow on these back ones here. I also don't want the shadow here. I'm trying to bear in mind all those compositional techniques that we spoke about in week one and make sure that we don't draw unnecessary attention to different parts of the scene. Now, as an aside, remember that Arnold restarts the renders when you introduce new lights or geometry. And this is because Arnold loads all of this into memory before it starts to render. And it also technically works outside of Houdini, so it isn't yet as interactive as Mantra. So now we have our sun. Technically, the sun is white and we can tone it later, but I tend to just add a little bit of yellow just to bring in some of that warmth against the blue. Nice. So this is technically all we need to do for our basic environment lighting. And let's take an overview of the shaders in the next video.